Okay, so what we're gonna harvest here, Stefan, is these Elm Oyster mushrooms. Awesome. So I'm going to lift from the bottom of the cluster and it starts to separate. Yeah, it's just ripping and off easily. I twist and off it comes. Okay. So as we can see, there's substrate attached to the uh, mushroom bases yet. So that has to be trimmed. Any small mushrooms I like to take off as well. It just gives a better, more presentable tasty experience for whoever buys it. Okay. So you can see a lot of the small mushrooms just kind of fall right off. You were mentioning earlier that the small mushrooms are um, They're being sort of cannibalized being sacrificed. by the larger mushrooms. Right. The mushroom is the fruiting body. Mushrooms are trying to reproduce. So the cap that has the most potential to sporulate effectively and be drifted in the wind to a new location is the one that the mushroom will send the most nutrients to. And they will actually take food from some mushrooms to go to other mushrooms with that in mind. So it re it's redirecting the energy that would have been spent on growing the smaller mushrooms back into the larger ones. That would have been very tight to that substrate bag. So right. there would be little air movement. Okay. Evolution's awesome, eh? Evolution is wonderful. <laughs> so trimming mushrooms is a relatively straightforward task. I want all the sawdust and small mushrooms out of there. Some mushrooms, like the king oysters, will have a lot of cavities where the hyphae that I described earlier at the flow hood right are feeding the mushroom. Well, that grows through the outside of the mushroom. When we get those big pin sets, like you saw on the king oysters that are a week away from fruiting, right. already it is pushing so hard on the substrate that the center has come away. And so there's a big cavity of sawdust that has to be removed, which oh, is okay. why we we trim them the way we do. Okay. And here again, we have a whole bunch of small mushrooms. Uh, the bigger mushrooms are cannibalizing for food. Okay. And in here, we have kernels of grain that were yeah. used for inoculation. And the rest is sawdust and beet pulp. So this is a presentable cluster of oyster mushrooms. Oh, love it. I'm going to trust the expert here, and I'm just going to use that product. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs>